How's it going everyone? It's Chow here and today we are going to talk a little bit about life tables, so let's get started. Okay, so life tables are pretty interesting because you can use them to track demographic events of cohorts of organisms. So a cohort here in this context is just a group of individual organisms of the same age. So you can think about maybe people being born in around the same time as a cohort. You can perhaps say you have certain species like birds being born in the same season as being a cohort. And you can keep track of these demographics over time by checking on their survivorship, by checking on their rates of mortality, as well as rates of fecundity. So what we can then do is take all this information and put it into a life table. So this is a life table over here of a species of Darwin's finch on one of the Galapagos Islands. And we can actually keep track of these age classes over time and look at some of these parameters and some of these uh, interesting things that we want to know about them, such as survivorship as well as mortality. So you take a look at your variables and parameters and you plug it all in and look at this particular table in the grand scheme of things with a little bit of calculation. So when we're looking at things such as the life table, oftentimes it's already presented for you, and so you just need to be able to read them and understand them from a general perspective. So there are two key things here that you really have to kind of understand, and that is survivorship and mortality. So let's take a look at this life table. We have age classes from zero to one, from one to two, from two to three, and three to four, four to five, so on and so forth. And so you can see here the original first age class, there were 210 individuals of this Geospes scandens finch that was alive at the time. After the first age class, so you jump from the first age class to the second age class of individuals from years one to two, there's only 91. So effectively, about 119 individuals ended up dying from this age class to this age class. So there's 91 individuals now. All you have to do is divide 91 by 210, so just the new number of individuals alive by the old number alive, and that will get you your survivorship. So here's 20, uh, 210, here's 91 in the next time step, 91 divided by 210, that will get you 0.43, so this is your survivorship. Similarly, if you go from the second time step, the second age class, to the third age class from years two to three, you can take, you could, you could take um, this new number here, which is 78, and 78 divided by the original, which is 210, will get you 0.37, and so on and so forth. So 70 divided by 210 is 0.33 and 65 divided by 210 is 0.31, and so this is how you get your, your numbers for survivorship. For mortality, however, you're looking at basically how many individuals don't make it from the first time step to the next time step, from the next time step to the following time step, and so on and so forth. And so it's looking at the proportion of individuals of a given age, X, for instance, who basically die before they move on to the next time step, X plus one, you can say. So we can see here that there are originally 210 individuals, and after that first time step, that first age class, to the second age class, we only have 91, which effectively means that about 119 individuals ended up dying from this age class to this age class. So then you can just take that 119 and divide it by the individuals alive in the previous time step in the previous age class. So 119 divided by 210, and that will get you 0.57, which is your mortality rate. And you could do this again and again and again with the next age classes. So you could see here from ages two to three, we have 78 individuals. So effectively, from the second age class, this age class, to this age class, we lost about 13 individuals. So 91 minus 78, that's 13. 13 divided by the number of individuals alive in the previous age class, which is 91. So 13 divided by 91 is going to be 0.14, which is over here, and that's our mortality rate. 
So we can go on and on about this. You can see here there's 70 individuals alive in the next age class from years three to four. 70 divided by 78, or excuse me, 78 minus 70, that's what we want to do first. We want to see the numbers that are, are basically the number that's passed away, the number that died. So what we do first is we take 78 divided, uh, 78 minus 70, which will get you eight. Eight individuals died from this age class to this age class. And so eight individuals died divided by the number of individuals alive in the previous age class, which is 78. So eight divided by 78 will effectively get you 0.1 or 0.1 over here, which is your mortality rate. So the number of individuals that actually end up dying from one step to the other. So the proportion of individuals that were alive in the new time step divided by the proportional of the individuals that were alive in the original number that will get you to your survivorship. If you take the number of individuals that died from one time step to the next time step and divide that by the previous time step, that will get you your mortality. So once again, we can do this um, with the next time step where there's 70 individuals and then after that there's only 65 left. So that means 70 minus 65, which is going to get you five. Five individuals died from this time step, this age class to this age class. Five individuals died. Five divided by the number of individuals alive in the previous time step, which is 70. So five divided by 70, and that will get you 0.07 shown here. And you can do this again and again and again until you move on and on. Fecundity gets a little bit more tricky because you're looking at the number of sort of fledgling females per female. So females per female per breeding season. So then you have to know how many females were there previously, how many originally, how many actually survived, and that can actually give you the fecundity of the entire cohort. But that's, I think, a little less important. In the scope of life tables, it's really survivorship or mortality that is probably going to require a little bit of calculation on your part. And in all honesty, this is a topic that generally doesn't come up as one of those where you have to pull out a calculator and start calculating things, but just in case it's good to go over and understand what each of these parameters mean. And so it's important to just understand what survivorship means, what mortality means, what fecundity is, know what a life table does, and then I think you'll be pretty set on your part. And just as a side note, you can actually take information from your uh, life tables and map them out over time and plot them out over time and you'll be able to find out these sort of survivorship curves of these organisms. And these survivorship curves can be very interesting and important for understanding both sort of the ecological life history of the organism, uh, some of the behavioral aspects, as well as approaches to maybe conserving some of these species. So I hope you found this useful. Again, life tables are a little bit tricky at first, but they're not really that scary. And in reality, they're not a major topic for most exams, so you don't have to worry too much about them. But getting a basic understanding of some of the definitions and what they stand for in the life table might be very useful for getting ahead on the class as well as the exam. So I hope you found this useful. Best of luck studying, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.